Hello once again, fellow YouTubers. Parrot Dragon back for another card fight Vanguard related thing. I'm gonna start something where I basically review the decks that I made. And I was gonna start out with my first deck that I ever made, but I realized that's gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna show you like I have three decks finished right now, and two still three still in the making, so that's a total of at least six. I think that's all I'm gonna do because making decks is hard and expensive at times. So I'm gonna try to go in the best order of how I made these as to how they're complete and whatnot. And if you can't tell right now, our first thing is Grand Blue. So I made a Grand Blue deck. I used all my decks in tournaments, all of which I think do somewhat well, the ones that are finished. And let's go over this. Alright, so I call this deck Trident of the Undead, and I will explain later in the video why I call it that name. I name all my decks in one way, shape, or form. So, let's start by reviewing the starter. I use Captain Night Kid. Now, there's the other starter, which is the, like, Skeleton Assault Trooper or something like that, where you counterblast one and you... Uh, like, search the top five cards for grade three. I use this one because Night Kid's ability is, other than just place my rear guard when he's ridden, you may counterblast one, put him into your soul, and look at the top ten cards of your deck, search up to one grand blue among them, and put that grand blue card in the drop zone, then shuffle your deck. Now, my deck, along with most grand blues, focus on calling things from the drop zone. It's basically, kill him off, bring him back. And my deck really focuses on that. Other decks kind of lean towards that, like they do it with their grade 3s or grade 2s sometimes, but my deck really focuses on getting things out of the drop zone. That's mainly where I get most of my support, either that or my, the support is already in the hand. And there's Captain Night Kid, a grand blue vampire. You can kind of read that. A common. I'm, and I don't know about prices and whatnot, but. Alright. Now, let's start off with the trigger lineup. I run four Rough Seas Banshees, so. Four of the Rough Sea Banshee critical trigger. Another common with 400 attack. And I use her because her skill is activate when you place her on rear guard. You put this into the soul and draw a card. If I have a Grand Blue Vanguard, of course. Which, this is a Grand Blue deck, so that's pretty self-explanatory. But, basically, I use her so it's like, okay, I ride to grade 1, or I don't ride at all. Place it down, into the soul. Now I have soul fuel for later on, which I will explain why you need soul. And I also can draw another card and maybe get like grade one or grade two out of it, or maybe a card that I might need. Or I might just get another trigger in which now I have more shield. So, a good substitute for a draw trigger, I guess you could draw, use a draw trigger as a substitute if you don't have this card, but I'd recommend using this card. This is a really good grand blue card. A ghost for grand blue, you can just read that. that. Alright. Next. We have four ghoul cannonballs. Another standard critical trigger. Just pretty self-explanatory. Doesn't do much. It's just another critical trigger. Another ghost for that. Can look at that. And I'm not sure what that thing is supposed to be, really. I don't know. It's like a cannon or something. And then we have four Night Spirits. So if you haven't guessed by now, this deck focuses on hitting hard with heavy crits. This focuses really much on heavy attacks. So, and I use Ghoul Cannonball and Night Spirit. Night Spirit is really important 
is kind of important in this deck though. Even though it's a normal thing right there. When I show you the other cards that are in this deck, you'll see why Night Spirit is really important actually. See, another ghost. You can just read them like that. Alright. And next I use four heal triggers. Now I have three Dr. Rogues and one Rick the Ghosty just because I like having some variety in my triggers if they don't like do anything. I like having variety and also Rick the Ghosty is just a cool looking heal trigger. I would have more of him but Dr. Rogues and okay heal trigger. So just show you both of those. There's Rick and heal triggers again can only have four heal triggers in a deck because otherwise that would be cheating. Mm-hmm. There's Dr. Rogue. Another common as well. Dr. Rogue being a vampire and Rick the Ghosty being a ghost. Alright. And our final grade zero. Yes, I use something other than just normal. I use some normal zeros too. I run three Chappie the Ghosties. Now, Chappie is really important in this deck too. Because not only is he good for guard, but his skill says that when this unit is placed on the guard circle, you may search your deck for one grand blue card and put it in the drop zone, and then shuffle your deck. When I show you my other lineups, you can see on how this could be really, really useful. And it is really useful. Another ghost for grand blue, and it's rare. And look at that. Look at that. Pause the videos if you, video if you need to. And let me just set everything up here. Now let's move on to our grade ones. I run three dragon spirits. Dragon spirit is really useful in this deck because uh, his ability. You may Soul Blast 1 when this unit boosts the unit Ice Prison Necromancer Kokaitis. Gee, I wonder what grade 3s I use. You may pay the cost. If you do, this the boosted gets plus 500 until the end of the battle. So, Dragon Spirit is the common Soul Blast, or do something special and you gain an extra 5. Another Ghost for Grand Blue, and Chappie's also a Ghost if you didn't catch that. Get try my best to keep consistent here, but Dragon Spirit is really useful. I, although I only run three of him because he's not the most essential there. Although he is the only thing that I really would use to boost a Vanguard, especially considering Ice Prison Necromancer is really the only thing that I would use for Vanguard. I use other stuff too. You read that for a second. Also a Ghost. All right, next. We run four Samurai Spirits. And now you can kind of start to see where this is going. With Night Spirit, these two, put them both in the soul, and you can get the, you can superior ride from the, from the drop zone, the grade three Spirit Exceed. That's why both of these guys are in here. Of course, that critical trigger looks awesome as it is, so even if you didn't use Exceed, he'd still be a cool critical trigger. And Samurai Spirit has this extra ability where from the drop zone you can counter blast one and choose a Grand Blue Rear Guard and retire it. And if you have a Grand Blue Vanguard, you may call it a Rear Guard. A 7k attack. I don't use any 8ks in here. This thing's also a ghost. And that's mainly because, again, these things are more more useful to help superior ride and whatnot. Yeah, most of my grade 1s consist of superior riding, except for Dragon Spirit, which is used for boosting. Another common as well. Alright. And for our last part of the grade 1 lineup, we have our... Another rare. Four Deadly Nightmares. And I use Deadly Nightmare because... You can help Superior Ride to Deadly Swords Master, which, yeah, gee, I don't know what my grade 3 lineup is. Also rare, and also a ghost. 
Also, Deadly Nightmare has its extra skill where if you Soul Blast 2 and choose one of your rear guards and retire it, you may, and if you have a Grand Blue Vanguard, you can call this to rear guard. So it's like Samurai Spirit except with Soul Blast 2. I don't like using this ability that much because it's very costly, especially considering Soul is really more useful when you have like Dragon Spirit out. But if I really need to get something out, I can get this out if it's in the drop zone, if I like used it to guard or something like that. Or if I need to uh, call to rear guard because I have no more grade ones that I can use to boost. Let you read that. Let you look at that. It's pretty cool, actually. Also rare. And let's move on. Oh, yep, we got one left. Okay, this is where people will get upset. I run one Gustian. The, per the P guard. The perfect guard. And y'all know what perfect guards do. Place them on guard circle. Attack is instantly stopped. It's double rare. Most P guards are. Demon. Huh, demon. 600 attack and whatnot. Yeah, I only run one perfect guard in every single one of my decks. Only one. And there's a couple reasons for that. One of them is because perfect guards are hard to find. So I fill up my space with other stuff that I can use. And as you can see, with my grade 1 lineup, I can understand only fitting one of these in here. And, main, I, yeah, main reason, though, is because perfect guards are really hard to find. You can read that if you really want to know what P guards do. And take a look at that. And also, some decks only need one P guard. Maybe I'll be doing a deck where you only need one P guard later. But... Anyway, only one Gustion, and also because I only have one Gustion to use. And all my decks kind of fit that requirement of only one per, per guard. Let's move on to grade twos. I run two Undead Pirate of the Frigid Knights. Now you're probably thinking, well, what the heck? Why would you do that? Well, Undead Pirate's skill is this. When on Vanguard or Rear Guard, this is an automatic. When this unit attacks, if the number of cards in your hand is less than your opponent's, this unit gets plus three, so it's a casual, oh, I have less cards, now I'm at, now I'm at 11k. This is also a ghost. As you're starting to see, I have a lot of ghosts in here. And you can read that while I talk. You can pause if you need to, but... As you'll see in my next grade two that I show you, you can kind of start to understand why I might use him. Also, he's not a bad card to use, actually. Considering a lot of your Grand Blue stuff will be used for guard material and putting it in the drop zone, or you'll just need it on the field, because Grand Blues focus on having stuff on the field. You, like, need stuff on the field. Anyway, I run two Greed Shades. See, this all starts to make sense now. Greed Shade is also a ghost. And Greed Shade's ability is actually a little bit different. When on Vanguard or Rearguard, if the number of cards in your hand is greater than your opponent's, you gain plus three. So, oh, hey, I have more cards. Now, I'm an 11k beat stick. So, here's what I like to do. Got my Vanguard in the middle or whatever. Call these two to rear guards. Start by attacking with this guy. Start by, like, doing some stuff to make sure my hand is lower than theirs. Say they have, like, four cards in, your, in their hand, and I've got, like, one, 11. Instant, instant hit for 11. Either they're going to garden, it becomes 3, or they're going to garden, it becomes 2, or something like that. Next, my Vanguard will attack. Say they guard with 2 cards, or they guard with only 1 card. They're still at 2 now. Say they guard with a perfect guard, they're at 1 card, or say they guard with 1 card, they're at 2 now. And it's a grade 3 or something. I do my twin drive check. And now I have 3 cards in my hand, and they only have 1. And then Greed Shade now attacks for 11, plus whatever stuff I give him, because say somebody attacks with a perfect guard, and guards with the perfect guard, I can give all my power to Greed Shade, because he's still standing. You, w I like using this combo, this is a really good combo, but... Thing is, you always want to start by attacking with Undead Pirate of the Frigid Knight first, because it's easier to have less cards in your hand than more cards in your hand. If you start with this, yeah, you might be able to attack for 11, but he's not going to attack for 11, because you're just going to get more cards either way. So I do that. Next, ooh, more rares. I run two Deadly Spirits. Now, I only run two of these guys, because I don't use his ability that much. His ability is 
just like Deadly Nightmare, choose Soul Blast from the drop zone. Soul Blast 2, choose a Grade 1 or Greater Grand Blue Rear Guard and retire it. If you have Grand Blue Vanguard, call it to Rear Guard. It's a 9k attack, so also a ghost. So he's not the best thing that I do. I have four Deadly Nightmares, though, because it's a good boosting thing. This guy, I don't use that well, but when I can use him, I can use him for the Superior Ride, which I will show my grade 3s off in a moment or so. You can read that. I like his flavor. It's all, The Grave is only a resting place. It's kind of like a lounge for Grand Blues. The drop zone isn't really the end for him. Anywho. Next. Four. Commodore. Blue Bloods. Not much to say here. Just the 10k beat stick. I do use the 10k beat stick because it's a good way to get power in and whatnot. Oh, he's a vampire. Look at that. Just like Night Kid's a vampire. 10k beat stick. It's rare. Not much to say here. He's just a good way to boost stuff, and if, say, I don't spear your ride, I'm still get, hitting you for a 10, whatever I'm boosting with. So, he, he's a good card to have. He's also good for intercepting and on the rear guard and whatnot, so he's good to have. Let's get to our grade 3s. First up, two spirit exceeds. And you're going to see why I use only two in like a second or so, but spirit exceeds skill. From the drop zone, choose a unit named Samurai Spirit and a unit named Knight Spirit from your rear guards, put them into the soul, if you have a grade 2 or greater vanguard, ride this card. So this is your superior, one of your superior rides. A triple rare, who is also a ghost. Let you pause that. And let you look at his awesomeness. I really like this card just because it looks freaking amazing. And also, it's an okay skill because... I like his skill more than Swordsmaster because he basically gives you an extra 2 in your soul. So... If you have a classic ride chain, you have a 1, a, a 0 with Night Kid, you have 0, 1, 2, and 3 in your soul. So that's 4 cards in your soul, plus the 4 FC's Banshee, that's 8 in your soul, plus Exceed Superior Ride gives you 10 in your soul. Which then, when you later ride to Kokaitis, that can really help you. Because now you've got a crap ton of stuff to soul blast with. So I really like Exceed. I really do. Next, I run two of the double rare, which is Deadly Swordsmaster. And again, I run two of each because, again, their superior rides are pretty good, and also they're really good to attack with on rear guard or vanguard. And this is an okay vanguard. His skill is from the drop zone. If you have Deadly Spirit and Deadly Nightmare on your rear guard, retire them. And if you're grade two or vanguard, you can ride this card. So he's also a superior ride. Let you read that. And look at that, because that's pretty cool, actually. And I don't like using this ability that much, because it kills off rear guards, and it doesn't throw them in the soul, just puts them in the drop zone, which, again, deadly. I'm not going to get Deadly Spirit out, but, but I may want to get Nightmare out of the drop zone. Of course, I have more Nightmares anyway, but... He's still an okay card. He's still a good card to use. Also a Ghost, and yeah, yeah he's pretty good. And finally, the whole star of the deck... The whole thing, this thing is basically based around. I run four Ice Prison Necromancer Kokaitises. And I use four because, again, he's the star. He's the main thing of the deck. And he is the Limit Breaker here. His skill on Vanguard, Limit Break, when you have four more damage. When this unit attacks, it gets an extra plus five until the end of the battle. And you might be thinking, well, that's not really special. He's just hitting for 15 when you have 4 damage. That's just like Thunderbreak Dragon or some other stuff. Yeah. Boosted by Dragon Spirit over there. Say you Soul Blast 1, you're not hitting for 26. Plus whatever cr critical triggers you got. So somebody's going to need to guard with more than, like, 2 triggers or a bunch of 5s or they're going to need to perfect guard it. Because I don't necessarily see people guarding over... 25, sometimes I see him guarding over 25, sometimes over 30. Ooh, a skeleton. I think he's the... I think Ice Prison Necromancer is the only skeleton in this whole thing. Cool beans. So you can read this, his triple rareness and whatnot. And again, that looks pretty cool. 
And Kokaitis' other ability. When he's placed on Vanguard, you may counterblast two. And choose a Grand Blue Freeman drop zone, call to Rearguard. This is where everything comes in. Say, okay, place him on Vanguard. I have, say, Swordsmaster in the drop zone, and because I used Chappie's skill or I used Night Kid's skill. Counterblast two, so I just need, like, two damage. I don't even need four damage, but I just need two. And I can now call him to Rearguard. I can call anything from the drop zone. So this becomes really good, and I'll just show you, like, a plan that I might use, or, and I'll just, like, show you my final thing and whatever, just like, yeah. Look at Kukaitis and stares into your soul. Okay. So just... I'll just get things ready here and whatnot. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. And basically, what I'm going to show you is my final tactic, the final hoopla. How my deck's purest and strongest form looks, and how nobody... And how everybody who has played against me, when I use this form, it's really... It's not impossible to beat me, but it gets difficult there. Da-da-da. Da-da-da. Blah. Okay. So, say, in the beginning I used Night Kid skill, and let's say... Um... Let's say I just sent Swordsmaster to the drop zone, and now I have Exceed in my hand. So, later... Or, say, I, like, guarded with Chappie the Ghosty, and... Again, I just sent one of my... One of my grade threes to the drop zone, which is usually what I do. I send the grade threes to the drop zone before I send anything else. Sometimes I'll send the grade twos or whatever, but or grade ones, but that's it's pretty much the grade threes. That's pretty much what I send. And now I ride to Kokaitis. And assuming I have four damage at this point, I can counterblast two. Now you're on rear guard. Next, I can call. And assuming I already have Dragon Spirit out, I can then, like, and say I have this in my hand as well. And next thing you know, I, like, call, like, a zero or call almost anything. I can counterblast another one and call Samurai Spirit out. Behold the purest attack that I like to do. Now you could argue like have two Swordsmasters and two Nightmares, that would make it even more powerful, but this is usually, this is just what I like to see because everyone's in there then. This is Trident of the Undead. Start by swinging in for 17. Pretty generic, they're either going to guard or not guard that. Say I have 4 damage. I can then Soul Blast for a total of 26 and whatever triggers come out, if somebody per guards that, everything will go to Swordsmaster then, and then Swordsmaster will swing in from minimum 18. So 17, 16 without limit break, and then 18, so lowest is 16. Again, with out the Soul Blast and say I'm at 4 damage, 21, so 17, 18, 21, and then this can become 26. This being Shrine to the Undead though. This is trying to the undead right here. And I like this combo. This is a really nice combo. And it has helped me win multiple games. The times that I can get it out. Now, usually I can't get everything in play, but when I do, it is really fun. And I think that's all I've got here. Get it. Everything out of there, just show you Kokaitis, and again, Kokaitis is the whole star of the whole deck. And that's pretty much it for my Grand Blue deck. So, the next time that I'll be here, ho hopefully it'll be a review of something. And this is Pear Dragon signing off.